Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. In this new tutorial, I will show you how to set easily an HDR map for your wall lightning. Okay, so first of all, uh, let's talk about HDR. You can easily find HDR map freely on the web that you can use for your uh, for your projects. And the main use of HDR is to have uh, the most realistic lighting possible. So when you want to render a car or architectural visualization or even your character and you want to set a, a base lighting that is pretty realistic, uh, you will use this kind of map. So compared to uh, JPEG, there is another input. Okay, JPEG and PNGs and a lot of uh, picture formats uh, just use the RGB uh, channel. On HDR map we have another channel that will give for each pixel in the picture a lightning value and this is why it makes it uh, so awesome to light your scene so I will show you how it works here we have an HDR map okay it looks pretty weird here because it uses an equilibrium rectangular um, projection so that when this is mapped on a sphere, like your world, it looks like unstretched. So let's get started. In Blender, I will just add a simple plane. Okay, scale it. We will add Susan. Update it. Scale it like this. Okay. And add a subdivision modifier. And a smooth shading. Okay. Here we are, and now I will run into render viewport chaining. You can use Shift Z to do so. So here I just uh, see my ambient occlusion. There is absolutely no shadow uh, casted because I'm only using the world by default to light my scene. And we can see here. Uh, the color of the world if I turn it to black everything turns to black okay so what we will do we will add a sphere scale it here add a subdivision modifier smooth it also and I will add a glossy shader to the sphere so that it will reflect everything around it and this will help us to give an orientation to our HDR map. So you must put or you may put the roughness to zero so that you have a, a perfect mirror effect. It will be easier. We will add also a shader to Susan. By default, uh, she will have any object added if it has no shader here. We'll inherit a simple diffuse shader with a gray value at this point. So let's turn it to a yellowish. You can also change the color of your object in the viewport based on the shader here. Tweaking the settings here. So it's uh, pretty useful when you create characters or things like this or anything just to organize a little more your scene and have a better visual feedback. So let's turn to rendering view. Okay. So here I can see my mirror ball and we will open the node editor and check the world. Okay. I will use nodes uh, to create uh, this uh, world shader. So you can click it here or even here. Okay. We will add our map texture environment texture open it so it is here and plug it into our background color and now I can see this lightning source and we can see on our mirror ball the picture we had before so if I add a camera here and snap it to my current point of view versus control alt 0 shift z to get back to random mode i can see now the wall 
in the background when I rotate my camera. Okay, cool. But we won't use it here. Okay. We will use the mirror ball to check where the sun is in our environment. So let's do it. Let's add a vector mapping here, which allow us to play with the rotation and add texture coordinate here. And we will use object as the world will be considered as an object here. Okay. And here we are. So now if I zoom here, I can see the sun here. If I plug this here and make a rotation, you can see the world turning around. So you have the power to make the world turn. That's awesome. <laughs> so on every axis, by default, you will just use the z-axis because we assume that the horizon is on the x-axis. Okay. So, here I can see that my picture is pretty grainy, okay, even with uh, 150 symbol. What you may um, enable is in the setting of the world here, multiple importance. And you see, it's less grainy, we have less fireflies. And increase this value to make it better. The problem with this is that it will really, um, really upgrade or, I don't know, make your, your the usage of the memory, uh, it will push it really up if I unplug it. Okay, I can see a <laughs> difference here. Okay, you see, 284. While here, we have a simple thing. We take like uh, 50 megabytes of RAM. So, don't push it uh, too high if you have some engine's limitation. So now I have um, a cool lightning setup based on the environment. But mm, what if I want my shadows to be sharper? What if I want additional tweaking? And it's pretty simple, a little trick. We will add um, a matte node here and duplicate it. Set the first one to multiply, plug this one here, okay, and plug it here, okay. Currently, the only tweak you have is to play with the strength of the lightning, and it will just increase or decrease the light strength. But if you use this chain, let's put it to zero, and one here, and plug it into the strength. We don't have any difference here because what I am doing is using the values, the lightning values of this map, set it to zero and add one. Multiply it by zero and add one. So one becomes one. So it's exactly the same result here. But using the multiply uh, input will allow you to sharpen the shadows. Okay. See? And now, by tweaking the add to 0 0.6, for example, I can reduce the global lightning. Let's put it to 0 0.2, okay. So now, you can see I have sharpen, uh, shadow, okay, sharper shadows, and I keep this uh, cool lightning. And you can see here that we are uh, closer to uh, morning light or something like this, where um, we have less ambient illumination and more uh, directional lightning, okay? If I set this to one and reduce this one to zero, or even less, I guess, you can have really strange result, okay? So just play uh, with uh, small values here, okay? And tweak here your global illumination. It's like playing with contrast here and lightning here, okay? So this is uh, really cool, uh, I believe, because when you are doing characters like me, that's my favorite stuff, I like to have uh, some sharp shadows uh, to show the muscles and stuff like this, 
while using a pure HDR map like this will make everything uh, too soften for my taste and here with this super simple setup you can uh, play with everything okay with the basic basic entries at least and change um, the way the light behaves on your HDR map okay so I hope you find this interesting uh, as it's pretty simple it's not often recovered so I hope it will help some people because I, I've been searching for such kind of tutorial for a while so I hope to see you soon on other tutorials and see you goodbye